let's do some Python on hardware time. There's a couple things you want to talk about this week. Yep. Yeah, you wanted to talk about, um, we have 903 released. Um, do check out Book the links. Yeah. Um, and then there is expressive chip news. Um, well, sign up if you want to get notified when we have this ESP32 C6 feather. It's still in prototype phase. That's why it's green. But, you know, one day it'll not be green. It'll be black. And that's how you know it's released. Um, and then you'll get notified when it's in stock. Another thing that I thought was kind of cool is um, we saw a preview like almost a year ago about the ESP32 uh, P4, which is like a very powerful um, processor. You want to scroll down a little bit? Yeah. Um, so this is like a, like, it's so it's interesting it doesn't have Wi-Fi, but no, it does have Wi-Fi. Um, it, should, it wasn't clear at the time. So it's Wi-Fi, but it has like dual core 400 megahertz processors. I don't know if it's intense silica or risk five. It's got like CSI, DSI support, um, HDMI, a dis lot of display, very serious display stuff, which they've been yeah. sort of practicing a little bit with the S3. Um, so the P4 is really cool, very big too. Uh, 32K of built-in SRAM, and of course PS RAM can be added. Um, there's 16 kilobytes of ROM. I think that's just to, to run it. Oh yeah, there you go, up to 64 megabytes of PS RAM, built-in um, 768 kilobytes of SRAM, and then 32 kilobytes of uh, low power SRAM. And they're really good at low power stuff, FPU, DSP. But yeah, basically display stuff is where it seems to be at built-in. Uh, decoders and stuff so um yeah obviously we are interested in the ship when it comes out we'd love to add circuit python support yeah um i got a question for you so they have independent um in deep sleep so when a chip maker says something like this how how would they handle that when they say independent like what are they what are they doing well, that's a good question what are they doing um to, I, to have to to say independent is it another that, chip that does it that's like yeah waking up stuff is it it watchdog be, as they say they could have a, you know a low power chip like a risk five core which they've done in a couple chips so far they've had the main core and then a very very low power risk five core so there could be some sub processor that is like in deep sleep of the main processor it is doing you know little tasks like checking for a voltage or you know communicating over squared t or, or checking for pins and stuff um so that, I'm assuming that's what that means. I don't know though. We'll yeah, that'd be interesting. Um, as someone, um, Todd mentioned in the the chat that you know there's keeping the ESP32 brand in, which they don't need to, but like everyone knows what that is. So that but yeah, I mean, sense express too. it. I mean, like it, you know, yeah, it's a little confusing to people say ESP32. It's like, well, do you mean the classic or do you mean the S2 or the S3? Yeah. But you know, it is a very strong brand. Um, and there probably is something to that name that means something it could be that's the tensilica 32-bit family yeah um i don't know yeah i mean like they do have the um yes i think they did esp 8225 oh for tech naming there's windows uh mto in the chat says uh you know dot net there's a lot of terms i remember um i did work with sony a long time ago they had memory stick memory stick duo pro plus memory stick duo pro extreme it kind of got yeah it's challenging because on one hand it's like you know you want to lean on a good name on the other yeah. hand it can be confusing but you know like the avr series like atmel had a you know still making avrs yeah um uh, and they've yeah, changed quite a bit so i'm I'm kind of curious about how they're going to do independent deep sleep, deep sleep like is it another chip what is that thing like what is it well, yeah the deep sleep so very interesting very innovative on that yeah okay, okay so what else did you want to talk about um the other thing that's kind of cool is um Toddbot did these cool mini videos about using, oh, go back, go back, go back, um, click on the Mastodon link. So these neat videos, I don't know what's going to happen. Yeah. Oh, okay. Worked. Okay. Um, and you can play the video. So we added this thing called bitmap filter for, um, the camera. And then like, I kind of like never got to the projects I wanted to do with it. Um, but I like that he's like revitalizing this thing, which allows you to, um, it basically allows you to set up a kernel for a, a convolution filter um, that you can then apply to a bitmap. And I believe we actually did um, three by three by three. So like tr true RGB cubic um, filter. So you could actually like have different channels affect other channels. And I thought this would be kind of cool because you could like maybe do like some photography filters on it. But um, like I said, I never got to it. So it's kind of interesting to see that he's like, oh, like I'm doing like process, like I'm, you know, kind of, processing like art um it'd be cool to have pi processing it'd be like you know a, a python version of processing um for making these kind of cool funky filters that's cool 
And uh, yeah, thanks, Jepler, for fitting that filter. Yes. Okay. Um, and is there anything else you want to talk about? Yeah, that's it. I think that's a lot. Yeah. So There's more. The, I mean, the news. Tons. Board. Yeah. Well, tons. And uh, special thanks to Anne, our editor in chief for the newsletter. Um, we deliver this every single week to your inbox, and you can get that at adafruitdaily.com. We keep it separate from your store account because we do not spam.